the body right out. I know. That's the view I've grown accustomed to yes. this Hello! Evening. <laughs> you wanted to see elves. Hello! Oh. <laughs> Meet the twins and oh, Mr. Bob. Blood. <laughs> This, this, uh, here we go. This graphic is a colonoscopy camera. No, this is, a, this is what you it's see. It's actually inside your lower intestine right now. Well, you had that done, Robin. You must have had that done, I'm yes, sure. Yes, I did, actually. You had the camera. Uh, and I didn't mind the camera. It was the crew that was painful. <laughs> was, uh, and getting photo approval. <laughs> They're going, are you in yet? No! <laughs> it's hey, just a doctor uh, going, just looking around. <laughs> How are you? Are you, uh, you? I know, is it true you're a fan of the Mighty Boosh? Oh, the Mighty Boosh? Years ago, knew Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. I've, in the old days when I was drinking, it was three o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden my hotel room, it was Peter Cook at the door going, hello, Robin, <laughs> time for a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, we're going out now, I hope you don't mind. It's three o'clock in the morning and I went, sure, let's do it. <laughs> do you miss those days? Because you had, you were, oh, you were no, about as wild them. as a man could be, weren't oh, you? Oh, that was crazy. You know, uh, on my recent drinking relapse, I woke up one morning in, in bed and I was fully clothed and I had a child's mitten next to me and I went, oh, this is not good. <laughs> and it turned out it was a waitress with small hands gave me a glove. <laughs> but you don't want to door, knock on the door like, that's the man! <laughs> or you get a that's phone call from Michael Jackson. Was I there at your house? <laughs> No, I think those are, you know, those are the scary things. You know, and when you drink, you have this thing called blackouts. Yeah. And they're not really blackouts. It's more like sleepwalking with activities, you know? You're <laughs> still, you're just oh, you still... You, I think it's your brain going, listen, you're about to have sex with a goat. I'm going now. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know how it'll be. Maybe bad. I'm not sure. <laughs> But good luck, I'm going on vacation. I'm gonna leave the penis on, whatever happens, it's your call. I'm gonna try and have you shit your pants to slow you down. But good luck. <laughs> oh, the blackout. Oh, man. Uh, but uh, when, when, in your first wave of uh, uh, mania, of uh, craziness about Knoz, what, what was the longest period you think that you, you stayed awake for, that you, you didn't go home There was home one to time it? that someone gave me, uh, they gave me two black beauties, which is like, uh, for those of you who don't know what those are, they're two <laughs> speed pills. And I, I took them and I went, oh, sure, because in those days, yeah, whatever, fine, let's do it. Three days later, I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> still, boy. Still going strong. Why am I in Bombay? <laughs> <laughs> No, I was still going, and then the weird thing is you're, you're up and you're up and you're up, but when you crash, yeah, yeah. even the devil's going, dude, this is not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm really, oh, wow. <laughs> I lost you when you got on the plane, but this is bad. <laughs> I'm evil, but this is just strange. <laughs> Uh, do, are you surprised that you made it through that? Because uh, I'm a, yeah, I am surprised. You know, Amazing. a lot of people didn't, and, and it's a, a, a mad, mad thing to put your body through. Oh, it is. But we, I mean, so many of us did it, and you get through it. And there'll be those nights when you do you do cocaine, and you be like, oh, oh I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, and then you wake up the next morning, I didn't die. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> insanity, yeah. you know, and what a great drug. Any drug that makes you paranoid and impotent, how much fun can you have? <laughs> Come on, let's do this! What are you doing? I can't! I'm nobody, Charlie, I'm nobody! <laughs> and even your right hand is going, shall I start him? <laughs> what? Must we do the... Will you give me another piece of jewellery? <laughs> I'll watch. Shut up. <laughs> I'm glad you got your hands up because I've seen you up close before. And you oh, were just I'm about, scary, Harry. You're the hairiest man I've ever I was been literally, up close to. I'm really hairy. You're like your part, uh, you're like a heart gorilla almost. Oh, is it? I am so much a gorilla, I was once hit on by a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> I met Coco the gorilla, the one who signs. Oh, and Coco. She, it was so wonderful. She's very sweet and she basically signed to her trainer going, I'd like to take him in the back. <laughs> And the trainer, the trainer said this, he went, if she takes you back there, I can't help you. <laughs> no, let's go in the back now, I'd like to talk to you. <laughs> no, Coco, no play now. <laughs> but this must be, I guess, the dream of a comedian, is you want to reach an audience, you want to be popular, and therefore when you get to this scale, you're, you know, as big as you can be. It's like the, you know, Steve Martin, Billy Connolly, those are the yeah. big names, you're, you're yeah. up there with them now. Which must feel... I would have thought great, but also probably a bit strange. Well, it's a different kind of comedy because I, I have to, I perform big set pieces, I suppose, like on the DVD, as opposed to when you're in a theatre, you can engage um, with people a bit more. And I have engaged a little bit, but it sort of backfired last week in Glasgow. There was a guy in the front row and he had uh, 
he had some glasses with him, sort of some spectacles, and I said, to, I just saw him sitting there, and I, and I, because normally I just think I've just got to perform big yeah. and not get involved. But I just said, what have you bought your glasses for? You know, you're going to be reading during my show, do you have no high hopes for entertainment? <laughs> and he said, I've got a lazy eye. And that sort of shifted the atmosphere slightly in the room. And I, so I tried to change the subject. I said, what's your name? He said, it's Ian. I couldn't resist it. Is that with two eyes? It was there for the table. <laughs> 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 well, what about stuff that isn't about you as such? What about do you, do you ever look to news stories for uh, for comedy as well? Do you look at big events, big happenings, that kind of stuff? Well, I had the, I had um, not really, but occasionally something occurs to me. I had this joke that I was doing, uh, which involved Michael Jackson, um, and it, 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 there's a bit of a tension every time you say it. It's, it's like it's not yeah. a, it's just a, it's a silly little joke, yeah. um, which which was that I was talking about swine flu and how I was very worried that when we announced the tour, swine flu hits, and I was worried that you know how bad is it going to get? I didn't want everyone to be in the audience with you know sitting with the masks on and the gloves. Isn't it slightly ironic that Michael Jackson dies just as his look comes into fashion? That was just <laughs> you know that was. The... <laughs> 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 what about you? No, it's not. It's not meant to So this is, this is me on the cutting edge of comedy. <laughs> I actually had a terrible incident with this show. My, my wife loves this show. I didn't even know if it was particularly good. We were on holiday, and, and I'm always very nervous to try out new jokes with my wife. And I said, oh, I've got this Michael Jackson joke. And she just couldn't stop laughing. She said, that's hilarious. Um, and then we were, I went, I've got this award. And I've, ne I've never won an award, and it's quite nerve-wracking. Um, when you win an award for comedy, I think you have to be funny when yeah. you receive it. It's not like you win for art direction, you draw a little picture. Yeah, yeah. You have to prove your worth. <laughs> Otherwise, they, think they just take it away there on the podium. Um, so I said, what shall I do? And she said, just do something really quick. Do the Michael Jackson joke. Just do the Michael Jackson joke. Yeah. It was at the GQ Awards. <laughs> And look, you know, you know what it's like, there's all these famous people, there's Mickey Rourke is there, and, um, you know, Lily Allen is, and Kate Moss, and I'm like, the last thing I want to do is win an award for comedy and die on my ass in front of all these people. <laughs> and she just said, just do the Michael Jackson joke and just get out, just do it and then just get out. Just don't, don't faff around. She also said, it's, it's a strong category, it's unlikely you'll win, thanks for your support. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I win the award and she just looks at me and goes, do the Michael Jackson joke, don't mess it up. She tends to... She tends to end most, most things with, don't mess it up. Well, <laughs> yeah. Unload the dishwasher, don't mess it up. <laughs> so she says to me, do the Michael Jackson All I'm thinking is, do the Michael Jackson I get to the podium, I'm walking up the thing, I've got Kelly Brooks standing there with the award, you know. And I'm just thinking, do the Michael Jackson do the Michael Jackson I look into the front row, no word ever like, Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine Jackson! With the sunglasses on, big beaming smile. Look at me going, who's this guy? He looks kind of funny. I'm like... <laughs> I just got the award of it, thank you, and walked straight in. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Not what you want. <laughs> oh, you must miss being at home, because you're touring all the place. You must miss being with your wife. And you've got two sons, both sons? I have two uh, middle-class sons. Two little boys. Called Lucas and Oscar. Lucas and Oscar. Um, yeah, they're doing very well. I, I mean, I feel terrible. They're, they're not very happy with me, because I haven't been there a lot. Well, Daddy's not there, but they, they will no. understand one day no. that you're out there uh, earning... Uh, I uh, hope so. I hope so. Um, and well, that, I was thinking about that the other day. I mean, there's so many jokes about them in my act as well. I hope that they can see that and that'll make. Well, what kind of jokes do you tell about your boys? I talk. <laughs> they're not they're always favourable. I, I talk about how my four-year-old has no manners. He, um, he he can speak now, but he just he's no manners. I mean, he finishes his lunch and he just goes ice cream. I want ice cream. I'm like, what do you say? I want ice cream now. <laughs> what do you say? Give me ice cream. <laughs> what do you say? Ice cream. <laughs> Hold on. This goes on for about is 15 he, minutes. Is he from Asia? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It was kind of Korean accent. I was like, oh, basic. I'm crazy. Give me ice cream. <laughs> and then he says, please. He goes, please. And then you sort of have to give it to him because he said, please. And it's kind of confused. Well, yeah. I, feel like, I think he thinks you have to shout about something for 15 minutes. Then you say, please. And I need to dip that in the bud as a parent. Otherwise, he's going to be on his first date at 18, what? finishing off dinner going, sex? <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah. sex, 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 sex. But Michael, you know, <laughs> if you weren't for social convention, that is what we would all do. Isn't it? <laughs> Ironically, that's how he was conceived. <laughs> 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 uh, my brother is sort of like me, but ten times worse. I edit what I say. He doesn't. <laughs> he, <laughs> honestly, he was, he's a painter and decorator, and he was he was driving his men uh, to to a job. Right, he um he was painting the uh, uh, weapons research establishment in Aldermaston, and he stopped at the gate, and he's, there's wind ups, the razor, and he's making his, uh, you know, blokes laugh. And uh, this policeman comes out with a mirror on the end of a stick, and he looks under the van like that. And as he's doing it, his helmet falls off, <laughs> and 20 cigarettes fell out. And the, the, the copper looked at Bob and sort of went, <laughs> he went, I bet you've always wondered what we kept under our helmets. 
And Bob went, I knew it wasn't fucking brains. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he say that? No, it's because no. he was in the mode and yeah. he just thinks of, And the <laughs> copper went, I'm going to strip search this car on the way out. <laughs> and Bob went in and he finished his shift and he just waited for this copper to go off shift. He wouldn't come out. <laughs> At my mum's funeral, right? Um, yeah. um, me, and, me and Bob. <laughs> We were arranging the stuff and Bob uh, went and sort of uh, spoke to the vicar and uh, I went to the, um, uh, the funeral parlour and had to arrange the flowers and stuff. That was a tough gig. Yeah. I went there and, and you know, um, um, uh, my parents had a great innings and we were, you know, we were always cheerful about it and it, we were, you know, obviously sad but this woman comes up to me about, about the wreaths and she's sort of dressed down. Of course, you know, it's a funeral yeah, parlour. Yeah, so. um, and uh, I'm making jokes. Oh, she's not falling for it. Tough crowd. And um, <laughs> she said, um, so um, what wreaths were you thinking of? I went, I, I don't, what are they? She went, well, she was a mum. I went, yeah, so we do mum. I went, yeah. She went, and she was a nan. I went, yeah, so we do nan. And she said, what was her name? I went, Eva. She went, okay. I said, is it cheaper because her name's short? <laughs> <laughs> she went, well, we charged by the letter. <laughs> and I went, we all called her E. <laughs> not, not a flicker. Not a flicker. That. Just looked at me and I went, Eve, Eve, Eve is fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, my, my brother's talking to the vicar and the vicar said, so tell me something about your mother. Um, what, 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 was, what was your interest? And my brother went, uh, she was a keen racist. <laughs> <laughs> and the vicar went, well, I can't say that. <laughs> and, and Bob went, no? He went, no, he went, OK, put gardening. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is fantastic. So, so you're, it's going about as well as you would hope it to go, I guess. It's going even better than I thought. No one's shot me or thrown anything at me. So well, we don't do that so much over here. That's an American thing. That's an American thing, yeah. yeah. I, I just had to call Obama and tell him to duck. Okay. Uh, are you pleased to be away from that? Because at the moment, it does seem to be the news in America is dominated by it. It's not even the election as such. It's the struggle to find someone who will head the various parties before they go head to head. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's good, though. It's, it's, there's going to be a change. It'll, yeah. You know, Bush has messed it up so bad that it's hard for a white man to even run for president right now. <laughs> that's, the, that's the positive side of it. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, give me a woman, a black guy. <laughs> it's gone to that extreme. It's, yeah, it's a woman, black guy, a, a, a giraffe, a coyote. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you get involved in politics yourself because you're, you're high profile? I know uh, Oprah Winfrey has put her name behind Barack Obama. She's uh, kind of been out lobbying for Oprah him. Winfrey is so rich. She bought our Barack Obama. <laughs> she paid for him. She built him. He's a robot. <laughs> he doesn't really exist. Well, he's her Barack toys. Obama. Yeah, that's not a real that's name. A great name, isn't it? <laughs> have you ever met anyone called Barack before? I have never met a Barack or a Obama. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's a first. He is a first. I, I like him. Every, have every you met him? I've, I've, I've met him. I've talked to him on the phone. He, Every time I see him, I'm like, so when are you going to get back with New Edition? What's that? Like? <laughs> you guys need to get the band back together. What's happening with Bobby Brown these days, by the way? Oh, I don't know, but I'm sure crack is related to it. Poor <laughs> uh, Bobby Brown, right? <laughs> Whitney, she sorted herself out, isn't she? She's doing, yeah. Whitney's doing yeah. good. I mean, hey, they got their kid, you know. <laughs> yeah. Doing better than Britney. No one okay, yeah. <laughs> That's a sorry, sorry state They take the white kids bit. quicker. They take, like, <laughs> take, the, <laughs> take the white kids at the first sign of danger. <laughs> Black kids, hey, he can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's he's got to learn to be tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's rough out there. Do you worry about that ever, though? Are there, is there material that you, you shy away from? Are there areas that you don't want to head into because it might be either misinterpreted or upset people? No, I just talk, I talk about pretty much anything. I don't... I don't I don't have any Oprah jokes, just because why piss off the only black billionaire? Why do that? <laughs> you know, I might need some money. I might need an extra 10 million. And hey, Oprah, could you go on your couch and get me 10 million? Yeah, yeah. She is a phenomenal success story. Oh, she? she's the best. She's ha the closest thing we got to God. But, she <laughs> <laughs> but you see, oh, here's what I don't understand. I pray to God, I speak to Oprah. <laughs> she could be president, surely. Yeah. She could be, if she, once Barrett gets in, if people get time, she could just step oh, in and Oh, she could out. just shut this whole thing down if she wanted to. Would you be interested in doing that? Would you be interested in politics? No, no, I've had way too many affairs to do that. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> too much drugs and... <laughs> just... Did you have a... Well, actually, you, you're a father, aren't you? You're settled down now. Yes, yes, okay. I, have, I have two daughters, okay. you know. How old are they? 
They are five and three. Yeah, well, yeah. So they what smoke. Not... <laughs> <laughs> they smoke. That fight, yeah, they it? smoke, but you know. Yeah. Menthol. Uh, menthol. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how are you as a dad? How hands-on are you? How how uh, around them are you? I'm I'm very hands-on. I I beat and smack them. <laughs> and, uh, Traditional. Yeah, yeah. I, that's my that's my right, right? I, <laughs> I beat him. If anybody else beats and smack him, I get yeah. mad. Yeah, that's within yeah, your life. I get mad and I go, I show, hey, if you don't smack my kids, yeah. you smack them like this. <laughs> yeah. you, uh, how do you feel though? How different is it for you raising your kids? Because it's something I struggle with a little bit. Is uh, I'm assuming you, you weren't born into a wealthy family as such. No, no, no. But no. they're we, born into we were, essentially. We were broke. Yeah. Just, just... So they're going to have, regardless of what you try and do about it, a very different upbringing, a very different view of the world that you have. When you yes, 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 yes. My, my, they're rich kids. And the, the weird thing is, no matter what I do, that my kids are like rich kids. And I've never liked rich kids. <laughs> yeah. So there's a part of me that actually hates my own children. <laughs> like, deep down inside, I'm like, you lucky Welcome man. to Friday Night with me, Jonathan Ross. Oh, I've just been messed. Oh. Don't patronise me, Alicia. <laughs>